Good afternoon, thanks again for tuning in to the Workshops for Warriors YouTube channel. Today we'll be building a 7 foot by 12 foot hypertherm torch made CNC plasma table. Today we have four volunteers on hand. The Mike Smythe of MTS, Justin Sanders, Scott D on your camera man, and myself, I'm at Man Luis Prado. Again, Workshops for Warriors is a 501c3 nonprofit. We do vocational training and rehabilitation for vets. Again, you don't have to be injured to join us. Any vet is welcome at our facility. Look us up at www.workshopsforwarriors.org. Again, before we start, we want to thank Hypertherm for their donation of a PowerMax 85 unit with a machine torch, hand torch, cables, a full curriculum of plasma cutting. We also want to thank TorchMe for the system that they donated in part. Allied Waste for all the trash services they provided. SolidWorks, Microsoft, Mastercam, Autodesk, just a few of the people that have been instrumental to getting this project off the ground. Thanks again. Let's begin. First step, get 21 of these inside corner bracket assemblies set up with T-bolts. hours in a day. <laughs> yeah. One inch. It's one inch. Okay. Yeah. Then the next one is one inch. One inch. Okay, we did that. What's next? Find the extrusions and put the base plates on them. So now we have the one inch spacing for those, one and a quarter inch spacing on these. Now we need to find base plates. The short ones? Uh, do it like that. How many? Uh, it says times three. Three pieces? Three pieces. Yeah. And the Five holes. But we're also going to need these too, right? The clips? Yes. And three of the 24 inch feet. How much engagement are we going on this feet? I don't know if we can always fill up, but they're all the way down. Of the legs that we built in step four, six of those corner places that we assembled in step one with 16 nuts. Yeah, so step five is done. Perfect. Hand side. Is that so the carriage rests on the left hand side or the right hand side? We made three. Yeah. Now we're going to make one okay. side. Um, but we the just need that, which is 126 by 6 by 3. Yeah. yeah. Now what we're doing is step six, which is connecting the tables to the long side of the rail. So we're going to get a little bit closer and you're going to see that we have these corner bracings right there that fit into the table. And now we're just going to loosely put them in position. Later on we'll tighten everything down once the table is squared up. Next step is step eight where we do the, ta the table legs for the other side. So now we got one of the side pieces set up already with 24 inch legs. And then we're going to set up three of the 32 inch legs just like we did the other 24 inch legs. That means with a base plate, a leveling foot, and some of these brackets. Alright, now we just finished step six, which is putting these the aluminum extrusions onto that long rail, which is the, the short side. Step seven is putting the whole thing together with these extra bracings on the inside 
And then this is gonna be the slat holder. So we've got two over here, two on the other side, and then another corner bracing. Remember, this is upside down, we're gonna flip it over in a moment. Then what we did is we went to step eight of the aluminum extrusions to build the legs for the other side of the table, which was identical to what we did earlier. And then step nine, again, assemble them with the cross braces, and we'll show you over here how that turned out. Cross bracing, we mounted these legs onto the long cross member, same with this, and over here as well with another cross brace. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set these two rails against the bulkhead over here, and then we're gonna put a cross brace in, and then our table will start taking shape. Ready, let's go. Now what we did is we put the upper rail against that wall back there, and now the lower or the front rail is gonna be leaned up against it for now. And again, we wanna thank Sky and Joe at Hoffa at uh, Torchmate, because they sent a whole bunch of extra bolts and nuts. We managed to lose a couple of them down to that sump. Now we've got both the forward rail and the aft or further rail. If you notice, one's taller than the other one. I know it might be hard to see at home, but this one here is 24 inch legs. Those are 32 inch legs, so the back is a little bit higher than the front. Now we've got the back and the front set up, and now we're going to put the cross members in. Yeah, we have these self leveling legs. Right. First, we need to make sure that everything is square to each other, and then we'll level up. Oh, yeah. So we need it's better, more important for those three right angles to each other. And then we're going to have Ready, Mike? Good idea. Right. See that? It's like low now. See right there, that square. Right there. Now we've got the table tentatively set up. We've got the cross braces in place. What we're doing is taking diagonal measurements to make sure that both of the diagonal measurements of the table are equal. That way we don't have a racked table. So now, thanks to Mike, the whole table is now square. So again, we, we're trying to get the whole table square, and then once the whole table is square, then we'll level the whole thing to make sure that, that there are no irregularities in uh, the entire table. But right now it's square, so each diagonal measurement is the same. It's 198 inches from left to right, and then from closest right to furthest left. Now, we're gonna try and get the precision ground rails going on. I don't know if you can see them on the screen, but that's next. The next step is to get these precision ground rails loaded onto the table. Now, obviously, if we were to connect the bolts with the T-nuts, we wouldn't have 10 feet to the left over yonder put the precision ground rails in place. What we're gonna do is basically just hold up the rails to the precision round bar stock, line up the bolt holes with the T-nuts, and then just put it into position. Yeah, what's this, so, uh... so now we have the T-nuts that actually fit in there and you can see them in there and they just kind of line up. Now what we're doing is we're putting in the precision ground rails on the opposite or high side of the track. Same way we did them before, we put the T-slots into the rails and now we're gonna line them up. Record. Now we've got the precision ground rails in place. Here are the close and far side of the torch meet. Now what we're going to do is set up these gear racks right here. And you look at the step 15 diagram, it's telling us that we're going to put them on the outboard side of the rails. And what it is is 
a 49 inch gear rack with 5 16 inch by 18 by 30 quarter and 3 quarter inch hex bolt with some washers and some T-nuts. So we're going to set these things up together, we're going to show them to you and then we're going to go ahead and install them. So I'd love to tell you that we did the whole thing without any mistakes, that everything went together flawlessly, but since we have a table that's a little bit bigger than normal, we actually forgot that uh, these directions don't exactly apply to us. So we had to remember to put in a, an extra leg. You see that we have one, two, three legs, and then at the end we realized that we had a couple of things left over. So we went back and installed a fourth leg there, and then a fourth leg on the front rail assembly. So now we have four rails in the front, four in the back, and now we're gonna start work on the precision ground gears right here. That's one five sixteenths by three quarter inch by eighteen bolt and then a T nut behind. Like that. And we're gonna do that for all of them. In our case, eight of them. We'll we'll let you know as soon as we put it back together. So now what we're doing is we're putting these gears. See this right here? The gear railings geared down all the way along the side of the railings. So we've got 12 feet on one side and then 12 feet on the other side over there. Now we're going to move on to step 17, which is the slat support brackets. Go. All right, today's the end of day one of the build. It's now 7.30 p.m. But we did get most of the major things done. The back rail's done. We have the precision ground rails in place. We have the gear rails in place behind the upper rail and the lower rail over here. We have the precision ground rails up in front. We have the cross beam set up. We have the slat support set up. And all four of the legs forward and four legs aft are all set up. So tomorrow we're going to set up the gantry and work on the electronics. Thanks again. See you tomorrow.